Through this homeless camp, it is our protest. It is like, we want you all to see this. The criminalization of homelessness, it was described as cruel and all of those things by the UN. It's becoming increasingly clear in the bigger picture that it is not legal or moral to punish people for sleeping when they have no other place to go. The Human Rights right. Commission, which is part of the city government, has made a very strong recommendation in writing unanimously that the city should not shut down Whoville until there are rest stops or their equivalent to receive them. They have advised the city council this is in violation of international human rights treatises. Whoville is like a tent village and it's a community and it is particularly moving because these are people who were strangers who came together from different, they're actually driven together by the county and the city when they were evicting people from the wetlands and other open areas where people were camping. And so they came together. I mean, look at them, I mean, they're just like, like a community, like a family. And this is the first home I've had in a long time. It's all I had. For them, there is nowhere to go. There is no no shelter that's open. There's there's no spots available. There's not very much assistance readily available to these residents at all. That's why they're here in the first place. It's hard for us to be out here like this, but we don't have no other place to go. But I can tell you, uh, it's very painful being cold. Very painful. I can't tell you what pain goes to your thought processes and then lack of sleep. Sleep deprivation makes people crazy. That's why it's the most universally used form of torture in the world. For the city manager and police chief to consider using sleep deprivation against people who are disabled, people who have mental illness, people who have addiction problems, people who are living in a refugee camp. How is that even tolerable? We're fighting for the right to just live on Earth, simply, you know? And and, and be, a, be a, a point of light that is actually like a, a pathway that someone can walk down like, uh, Right here, he hasn't taken down his tent yet, but he just he just uh, moved a bunch of the stuff out today. He's got a job, he's got a house. This has been a pretty unusual model that's actually working. We have to be innovative. We don't have resources to take care of the homeless. We don't have resources to take care of the people who have mental illness and addiction. What are we gonna do? From the people that this place has helped and uh, have passed through here, you're talking hundreds. Hey, hey Red, this is my buddy Red, he's one of my rescuers. Oh, I'm gonna go to the clinic. I'm in the clinic. Yeah. A lot of other people like that are, are really, I mean they're chronically homeless. You know, they probably will never have a home. This is a place where they can come and feel safe and protected, you know, and uh look after. This really wonderful moment has happened with that community where they have discovered that they can help each other and that in community they're stronger. If somebody needs to make a phone call to check on a job interview and they don't have a phone, there are other people, oh, can I use your cell phone? You know, I'm expecting this call and keep it all day in case they call you back. Um, there's folks that in the morning, the breakfast was a beer. And now in the morning, 
this breakfast for them. People with uh, sociological and, and um, physical uh, traumas and disabilities have managed to find shelter here in a way which is not possible in any institutionalized organization. I haven't slept this good in years. And when I'm ready to go to bed, I crawl in and it's a blessing. But it's this place. It is the fact that we have this place to offer to people that allows people to feel safe enough to reach out for resources, that they have a home base to reach out from. My philosophy on, on Whoville is this. Whoville isn't a cure. Whoville is half a step up off the street. Half a step. It's a community where they can come, they can stay for as long as they need to, to get their feet back under them, and hopefully transition into community-supported shelters or Opportunity Village, or another step up from the street from Whoville. It's a process. Very few people actually come off of the street and straight into a house and a job. That model just doesn't happen. You know, at least 30% of the homeless in, in Eugene have been through here and at least came here and warmed up or uh, used some facility we have here from medical to, to food to warming to sleeping here for a night or just getting a blanket here, you know, like from like the community network that's hooked up here. The citizens of Whoville have courageously created a safety net for many who otherwise seek dubious refuge in various corners of the city. At Whoville, they share supplies, food, clean water, bathrooms, and a hand washing station. The occupants check in on each other frequently as they depend on each other for physical and mental support. Occupy Medical offers preventative treatment for many issues that commonly afflict unhoused citizens during wintertime, including, but not limited to, influenza, H1N1, bronchitis, pneumonia, atypical pneumonia, UTIs, and an array of skin conditions such as trench foot and frostbite. Under these circumstances, it's less likely that they will or can access the health care they need. Life on the streets is dangerous. Sleep deprivation chips away at the body and the mind. Separating Eugene's Whoville citizens from access to adequate health care is a serious issue. Separating Eugene's Whoville citizens from a bathroom is a serious contamination issue for the entire community. Support us. Don't make us move. It's too hard. It's just too hard. Pretty rough out here, but I mean, it's all, you know, it's, it's a lot rough, rougher. We weren't all together. I want to thank the community for the support they've given us. And uh, have some mercy. <laughs>